All right, guys, time to use one of my crazy prezzies. The Agrolan plug trainer. I love these, you know I do, I've used them before. So, brand new one, and I should be putting some onions in it. Right, this is the newer version because it's got green plastic, green being recycled. Fantastic. And I'm sure you know how it all works by now, but I shall show you. Plant your stuff, water in the trough, pour the water out if there's too much, and the lid's got two settings. So they've got a little gap there for ventilation or you can turn it 90 degrees and no gap for totally sealed so last bit these these knobs on the top 49 of them seven by seven and when you've got your soil in your compost in you press down you've got your holes to sow your seeds right then let's get on with it now what i've found in the past when you put your compost in here in the cells don't leave it on the tray do it separate because you don't want to get too much compost in there so i'm doing this over leaning over this the what you call it but it'll be all right. i'm using um levington f2s s being sand and it's very good for modules because the sand helps it slide to the bottom very fine what you want to do when you think you've filled it fill it again give it a good usual tap down and what you want to do if you can is have a look underneath just to make sure you can't do it really just to make sure the compost is at the bottom of the cells and that way when you water you know they're going to wick up straight away so that's just about enough in there like I say, upside down for me here, but things I do, eh? I'll do. Right, the lid. Press down, and I shall bring this to you to show you. So you've got no slots of dimples there for putting your seeds in. And what I'm sowing today, like I said, onions. So I got Elsa Craig. But first of all, I'm doing these from Mike Bradley. These are large show onions. And there aren't many of these because I used them last year as well. So I'm going to try and do one a cell. And I'll bring you back because you don't want to see me putting one of these in every cell. Two in that one. And that's them all gone. So label up as usual. Good old Nigel Muddy Boots method. And I know these three rows are going to be Elsa Craig. So I shall put that on there. One, two, three. There we go. Oh. Just been up the plots, not too much damage. No. In fact, no damage really. Um, Harry the Hawkeye blew over at a jaunty angle of 45 degrees, but he'd be all right. And a few nets have blown off. I pegged them back down, so. Oh. And I'd like to just push these in before I sprinkle compost on top. Just to make sure they're in contact. Quick note to self, don't leave wooden sieve outside in the rain. <laughs> okay, let's get this out of the way. 
<laughs> Need that again as soon as I'll be doing chili somewhere. Right? Rest it on top. Okay, that's soaked up enough now, so I'm just going to tip the excess out. On with the lid, and I'm going to use the ventilator position because I don't want them getting too sweaty. And in the shed, much to Ryan and Willie's amusement, my massive 6x4 shed, uh, about 16 degrees, no light, back in a mow. Okay, here we are in the Vitapod in the shed. I got the light on just so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> a little dangler thermostat in there. Set the temperature. Yeah, 16 or 10. 5 degrees at the moment. Look. <laughs> right, light off and. Uh, well, oh, keep you up to date. Okay, quick couple of plot tours. This is the West End plot. Uh, cauliflower Alshmere in that bed and Cauliflower Amsterdam in that one. A bit close together, so it'll be uh, quite small heads. And we've got leeks stocky under that mesh there. And they do live up to their name. They are quite wide, actually. Stocky. Hmm. Past the carrot bin, uh, the gallows, which has got one arm missing today after the winds. But we'll sort that out. I've got an idea for that next year. Um, these beds need sorting out. The, um, I watched Charles Dowling's video the other day about taking the wood off your beds. And he's right, mine's gone rotten after only three years, not four. Not four or five. Um, yeah, I've got a few ideas here, so uh, we'll see what happens, eh? Compost bin. <laughs> tool store uh, purple sprouting broccoli and the variety is early purple sprouting broccoli all right uh, not been affected by the white fly at all really this year so that's good yeah a bit of a mess down the bottom need to sort is it right that a globe artichoke should start growing already hmm cabbage tundra in that one there the small just six of them in there not bothered covering those to see what happens and reflex kale kale reflex needs a bit of weed in but get around to leek karen gorman that one more weeding needs doing but uh, next year now and cabbage red ladero they look a bit funky on the outside but they're good in the middle Okay, on to the leaf and ground plot, plot 26. And right in front of you, bed there, kale. And this is dwarf kale, green curled. And I'm almost getting the like this. So interplanted with leek stocky. And in this bed, we have leek armor and leek stocky. Mix, a mixed up bunch in there. Spring Onion White Lisbon and Spring Onion Performer in there with some lettuce. The lettuce are just ones I had lying around, just put them in. And Swiss Chard Food Hook Giant. And I'll tell you what, that has been doing very, very well this year. The more you pick it, the more it grows. And some more kale on the back there, look, curly kale again. Brussels Sprouts, sort of dwarf, uh, dwarf variety from the, the shop at Leaf and Ground. And what's left of the Ishikura spring onions? Elephant garnet yet to appear at the front with the uh, Brussels from the shop. Uh, cauliflower Moby Dick in the middle. I'm leaving those uncovered as an experiment. And that is Brussels Agincourt, which I picked for Christmas dinner, but I ended up giving it to me son. <laughs> Under the green mesh there we have sprouting broccoli, which is um, Clara F1. Onions, Snowball, Electric and Radar in the bed on the right. Doing very well now that the pigeons have stopped lifting them. Here's Harry the Hawkeye. I think he works because I'm getting less damage than I should do for pigeons. <laughs> so this will be the bean and the squash type area next year. 
And in the little raised bed in the centre there are uh, Cauliflower North Foreland and Mystique. I do like my cauliflower. And Leek Autumn Giant. And they're very nice. I've been picking those. Great. Another new uh, no-dig bed here. This is a garnet bed this year. The hard neck on the left is Cascone White, Elephant Garlic in the middle, and Tuscany White Soft Neck on the right. Uh, another elephant, elephant, another elephant garlic on the end there. I just plonked them in where I could, really. Under the Enviro Mesh, uh, Sprouting Broccoli Rudolph. And under the Black Mesh is Cabbage Maribel. A couple of Cabbage Rigoletto under the Green Mesh. And under the Enviromesh there with some Shensu onions and cauliflower Amsterdam. A Chinese cabbage Scansi at the top and cabbage Tundra there. Well, I think that takes us back to the beginning just about. Yep, here we are then. Couple of snapshots to finish off with. Gorgeous rainbow on the 23rd of December. And a very fiery sunset on the afternoon of Christmas Day. And later in the evening we had a moon ring or a winter halo, which I was lucky enough to photograph. And here I am on Boxing Day regretting the excesses of the day before. <laughs> Oh dear. Anyway guys, if you don't see before, have a fantastic new year and let's hope 2021's a bit better, eh?